his third global gold medal. He's done it. I think the, the 5K is going to be a lot more harder than the 10K. You've got to have that confidence, you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to go in every race knowing that, yes, these guys, I'm going to win. I'm, I'm betting these guys in your head and at the same time respect the guys what you need to do. But not thinking, I'm betting these guys, I'm going to give them one yard head start or something like that. You've got to, you've got to cover every move and be at the front. But at the same time, use, you, use your tactics that you have. But you know, Mo, you're, you're the greatest distance runner we've ever had, and it's fantastic to, to witness this. But we've never had, there's only been one man, Kananita Bikili, who's ever won a double 5 and 10 at the Olympics, 5 and 10 at the World Championships. How would you feel stepping into his shoes? It'd be great. Kananita Bikili is a great athlete, and what he's achieved, and I remember as a junior, him seeing him win the World Cross Country, those different races, and it's still a record of 5 and 10, so he's a great athlete, and it would be nice to achieve something like that. Uh, but you know, I just got to go out there, respect everybody, and get in the race, and you know, just be there. Just tell us what the British public, when you're running the race and you're in the pack, yeah. what should they be thinking? Have a cup of tea, chill out, Mo's in the race. Well, there's the full list. Edris of Ethiopia, Lagat, a former double champion himself. He won the 1500 and 5000 titles in 2007. Zaya Koetz, big talent from Kenya, of course, Galen Rupp, Mo Farah's training partner, and then the names from Ethiopia, Gebrewet, and Alimeru Longasiwa, the Olympic bronze medalist, and of course, Edwin Soy. For the fastest in the world this year, over 5000 meters. The last big race was in Monaco. He won it. He ran fast. And he's beaten Farah before this year. In the shape of his life, says Soy, but I think Mo Farah may well, if he was writing a little essay about uh, how things are at the moment, he might just say something similar. The double Olympic champion attempting to become the double world champion. Alamaru thought that he could outkick him in Birmingham. It was a rehearsal, and it didn't work. And Farrow kicked him there, and if they didn't learn that leaving it to the end is playing into his hands, then I'll fool them. Longasiwa is quick, and he was in the finish, he was in the mix in London. He was a little far back, didn't quite get himself in the right position. Gebrewet, huge talent, this young man. The world junior record holder at 5,000 metres has already run 12.47. That's much quicker than Farah has run for this distance. Koech, another big talent, just 19 years of age. He ran 12.48 last year. But it's not times that win you gold medals. It's craft, it's being in the right place at the right time. Lagat knows how to do that. Young Edris on the inside, will he be a factor? <laughs> Men's 5,000 meter final. So here we go again. Twelve and a half laps. Mo Farah with increasing expectation on his shoulders. Every championship that he wins, every gold medal he collects, it just keeps more pressure on the next one. Doesn't make it any easier. You start every race like everybody else at the start line. And Brent, my old coach, used to say, nobody gives you a head start because of your reputation. That's exactly right. But Bernard Lagat, the wise old man, the 38-year-old, 36 seconds for the first 200 metres, he darted to the front, and he's only there for one reason, and that's to slow it down. And he's effectively done that in the first 200 metres, but that's not going to last very long. Galen Rupp in second, third place there, and Mo just on Galen's shoulder, and this is, for the moment, feeling like a training run. And the pace of it is probably slower than they do on a training run, but I, Isaiah Koech, the 19-year-old Kenyan 
the longest sea with a more experienced athlete, the Olympic medalist. Both of them now drift to the front, one lap behind them, 71 seconds. And that's a little thank you from Mo. Thank you very much. That was slow. And you know when you're in a race, you've got the confidence that that speed gives you, Steve. You know, to run the time you ran, faster than you ran, for 1,500 metres, and you're a 5 and 10,000 metre runner. The confidence that comes from that is absolutely enormous. He was staggered at how fast he ran. And a 50-point time, as his wife takes, uh, she mustn't be confident in the BBC's coverage. She's trying to do it herself, I think, but record it back home and you're about to watch it. But now the race is beginning to start. Yeah, just be keeping an eye on this. That's Koetsch at the front. And he wouldn't have minded when he first drifted to the front. Then he was joined by Longa Siwa. So he stayed back, and Mo at the moment is holding back. And this is interesting. We weren't expecting them to go hard from the start. It was a slow first lap. Koetsch is a brilliant athlete, brilliant young athlete, as I said. So leading them out. Longasi was latched on the back of him, and then slowly but surely, the others are starting to close up and to give chase. Galen Rutt there, just behind Lagat. And then Mo Farah much further back. And look at Gebre Hewet, he's thinking... Oh, come on, you should be catching up, and I've been told to stay behind you. I've been told to stay behind Mo Farah. I've been told to hang on to Mo Farah. And Farah just being patient, and why not? I mean, although Koetsch went off there at the front, you know, that, that's a long run from home. And I don't think there's any sense. What we might be seeing here, Brendan, is more of a, a surgy sort of race, which is another way of tiring people out. It is a way of tiring people out. Mo Farah with a confidence is to sit in the third group. A 61-second lap there, the second one. But unless you keep them going, unless you pile them on top of one another, a 61 second lap is doing more damage to you if you're just going to slow down after it because then the other guys have gauged their pace. They haven't bothered with the 61 second lap and they've just drifted off the back of it. Alan Maru, he's another danger. I think Longa Siwa was going to be a danger. The young Ethiopian Edris is in there too. And it's good to see an Australian athlete in that, in that, in that field. 65 there, so the 61 is ineffective. They've started jogging, and once again, Mo's done nothing at all, and the gaps have closed for him. So, a, a thousand meters behind us, 4,000 meters now, and the race hasn't even started. And to be honest with you, that's when confidence is important. Some athletes get nervous when they're not running as fast as they want to be, as, as, as they expect to be. And they talk about team races, and they talk about tactics, and at the end of the day, there's a little bit of thing in athletics for me. There's safety in numbers. You've got to be brave to go out on your own. None of them have decided they're going to be going to try it. None of them are confident enough to try and run away from Mo Farah. Nine laps to go. Yes, that confidence that Mo showed in his own ability is that Soy comes around the outside this time. And this certainly seems like it might be a bit of a tactic here. This idea to go slow, go fast, go slow, go fast. But as Brendan said, you really have got to sustain it for more than one lap because a little nudge on the shoulder there and as uh, Edris comes through, as if to say, all right, this one's for real, guys. I did mention, Brendan, at the start of the programme, you know, Edris has the same manager as uh, Soy and Longa Siwa. Everyone assumes it's always Kenya versus Ethiopia. Well, when you're on the circuit, it's not like that at all. And uh, Edris just drifted to the front there, but nothing really happening. This is all... This is all just feeling each other out. It's like boxers dancing around each other in the early rounds, just slinging the odd punch but not really going for it. The only tactic that's emerged to me in this event is that... that ...he's going to follow Mo Farah every step of the way. So, Gebri went in the green vest of Ethiopia. Mo's moved up the third from the back, fifth from the back. All the laps ticked down. The more the pace stays slow, and Mo Farah now at the front, but he's, he's not there for a reason other than to control the race. Every yeah, few little exchanges in the first few laps, he just comes and says, here I am, guys. The race hasn't a little bit if you let me. They're letting him do exactly that. Galant on the outside, Koetsch. And this is when you, know, when you get the, to the stature of Mo Farah, when you have other people worried what you can do when you are the big name when you're the Usain Bolt of your event people allow you to do things they shouldn't allow you to do and that's what they're doing here they're letting him go to the front slow it down 
But to stop him doing that, you need an awful lot of confidence in your own ability, and you need to measure your confidence against his confidence. But you know, it is tea time in England. He did tell us to sit back and relax, chill out, have a cup of tea. That was his message to people watching this event. Well, they're probably having a cup of tea, and the news is this race is going Mo Farah's way. The slower in the earlier stages, the better for Mo, even though, in my mind, if they made it really quick, it wouldn't trouble him too much. But 2,400 metres completed, a 69-second lap, so Mo's intention is pretty clear, and it was just to keep it slow, keep it steady, and let them worry about him. Don't be surprised if Coetz is the first to break. He's, he's been near the front. You can see there's probably a game plan hatching in his mind, which is about, you know, five laps out, four laps out. He's looking at the scoreboard. It says six laps to go. Four, there, Mo Farah on his inside. Soy just tucked on the inside as well. Edris is there. Longer Siwa a little bit behind him. Lagat lurking now. And the two better Ethiopians just uh, very close as well. Anna Maru and Gebri Iwet. But there's a big... Well, of course there's a big pack because it's been so slow. Nobody tailed off at this point. And uh, not, not long now, Brendan, there'll only be 2,000 metres to go. This is brilliant for Mo Farah. Less than six laps ago for Mo Farah. And they've been running at 14 minutes and 10 pace. And I promise you, that is a lot slower than they do they run in training. And there he says, there you are. You can take it on if you want to. That's, that's Koech of Kenya. The Australian running well, well alongside him, but you've got to be running well at this point. So Koat just stretching it a little bit. Galant of uh, South Africa on Farah's shoulder. Lagat realising that this might be it. Five laps to go. Is this a bit of an attempt to wind things up from Koat? His head goes down a little bit, and if you are going to go, you've got to go hard. It can't be half-hearted. You cannot play at this. You've got to put your foot down. Trust in your fitness. Trust in your ability. Trust in your strength. So Koetz starts to put his foot down. Everybody behind is realizing. Edris moves out very quickly to follow in behind him. Mo Farah right there, of course. Soy moving up. Longer Siwa on the inside. So the Kenyans to the fore. Lagat now moving up for the USA. The other Ethiopian has been a little slower to respond. Let's see what this lap is. Well, that was a 62, but it really started. At, it's been only about 300 meters of foot down. I think that's right. And I think this is now an effort, because when it comes to five laps to go, if you're thinking about making committed effort yourself, you can't go all the way. But you can go from five laps out. This is a distance where these men train 2,000 meter repetitions on the track. They know exactly what kind of pace to run at. He's, he's trying to make a move. Here comes Galen Rook on the outside. And as soon as Mo saw Galen, he decided that was time. Four laps to go. This is where you can make brave energy and make brave efforts. Save your energy. Just settle down. Don't do too much yet. And it's about confidence. It's about not getting tripped. And there's a little bit of an incident there. We don't want any of that. We want a true run last couple of laps. It's going to be a fast last mile here. And Mo is absolutely in the right place. And the next bit they'll want to try and do, if they can, is to rough him up a little bit, to try and get ahead of him. And that's what Alan Maru did, but the others are sitting where they normally do. So he's very, very close to Mo Farah. And Mo's realising he's just got to be aware here and just keep himself on the outside. Galen Rupp, his partner's on the inside. It's not perhaps the best place to be at this point. Coetz is already looking a bit tired. Alan Maru relaxed. Gebru Hewitt tucked in the pack. About four places behind Mo Farah, but Mo's got himself out here, and they know what he's going to try and do. When they get into the last thousand metres, Mo Farah will want to try and get to the front. You've all seen it yourselves. We've seen it. We know it. They know it too. And Gebri Wett knows it extremely well. He's following him beautifully. Mo Farah is in the right place. Less than three laps to go. Nothing's happened in this race at all. And now it begins to mount. The pace begins to pick up. 62 seconds for that last lap. And I'm getting more confident. There's some good talent around Mo Farah. There's some good sprinters amongst this lot. But confidence and the speed we've seen from Mo Farah. Bernard Lagat, the only man in this field who's ever run faster than 1,500 metres than Mo Farah. But he hasn't done it for a long, long time. Mo's done it so recently. There he is now, and it looks down the finishing straight. Less than a thousand metres to go. Alan Maru 
leading, but he's only there because he wants to try and stop Mo Farah getting to the front. You can see what his tactic is. He's slowing it there. And look at this. As soon as Farah tries, he's going to try and hold him off. He tried to do this in Birmingham. Then we've got Soy in there behind him. Look at Gebrehiwet. He's going to try and help his mate. Mo tries again. And Alamaru holds him off again. Now Gebrehiwet's right on his shoulder. Longer she was in there. Soy's just been blocked off a little bit. Behind Edris, the other Ethiopian. He's uh, five meters behind Mo Farah. And the race is really on now. This is an 800 meter race. And the thing about 800 meter races, you've got to choose your position. You've got to follow your tactics. And there goes Mo Farah. That's his first ever. And it's going to have to be enough. Now he's in the pole position now with 600 meters to go this is where he likes to be and his tactics from here are simply to hold off any attacks keep it steady keep a few speed bursts of speed available to you allow yourself to have the opportunity to sprint when you're challenged and he's only got one tactic now he's got to hold them up at every opportunity Farrell leading Alamaru is there, Longasiwa is there, Coetz coming round the outside, goes past Soy, he won't be happy about that, Lagat is still there, the American, and Gebre Hewitt in there, Coetz now on the shoulder of Farah. Well, the double Olympic champion is on his way to glory if he can just hold himself in the right place, hold him off, Mo Farah, you've got to keep battling, you've got to respond at every time they, but you don't use it all in the back straight, save some of it for the bend, save some of it for the finishing straight itself, Mo's controlling this, he's not absolutely flat out yet, he's running and relaxing and coasting, he looks magnificent, he's got this chance Mo Farah with Kovac on his shoulder, Longasiwa is there, Laga within striking distance have any of them got the ammunition have any of them got the speed, does anyone have the acceleration Mo Farah working hard he hasn't got this one yet, he's got to battle for this, he's sprinting for goal, he's running for performance from Mo Farah, his fifth global title, that's a fistful of gold, that was hard, that was really, really hard, it's not getting any easier, but it's just as sweet, it's just as brilliant, and I for one will never get used to this. We are in special times, Brendan, with a special athlete. We are in special times, Steve, with an outstanding athlete. After that victory tonight, you know, twice Olympic champion, three times world champion, you would have to say that Mo Farah, for my money, becomes the greatest athlete we've ever had in this country. And I think Paula Radcliffe is waiting upstairs. Paula, you must be so excited there watching Mo Farah. You've known him since he was a kid. You've held him along the line. He put himself in the front and he just would not let them pass. No, exactly. I mean, I'm so proud of him. I think he was probably the only person of all of us who throughout that race just totally believed and had confidence in what he was going to do because there was a few times there I was really worried. Once we got into the last 80 meters, then I was more relaxed. But here, he really, really had to work to, to get to where he wanted to be. He wasn't, he was controlling, but he wasn't exactly... Yeah, so now it goes and it just I don't know, it does not let him pass and he has to work and work and work and he manages to get there and once he's in here this is where he wanted to be and this is where he wants to control I'm not sure he wanted to be there just yet but he had to work there to, to get there and now it was all about just holding his position but what I was worried about was Legat sitting right there in danger zone and very dangerous. Soy moving up here. Galen at this point is not able to help him any. He, he's just hanging on trying to stay with him. And as they come into the last lap, this is what we talked about before. This is where Mo wanted to be and the position he needed to hold. But I was just very, very nervous about the people moving up around him. And Coach had really, really tested him and he had to work and work and work. And we'll see when we come into this, but this was a 55 lap. And he's just still. He's just doing exactly what he planned to do and exactly what they knew he was going to do, but they weren't able to do anything about it. In the beginning when they went to take out the lead, 
I thought they were going to keep doing that and keep doing a, more of a fart leg contesting so that then he wouldn't know when they were going to go. But they didn't, and in the end, they let him control it. They let him into his favorite position, and then from here, it was all over. And, and he knows that thing. He's looking up here, and he knows that he's got it at this point. I was still a little bit nervous, so he was moving up. The gap was still there. Kovic has still got a little bit left, but from here now, they know that they're beaten, and they can't close him. And it's, he's still looking around. He still knows that the dangers could come, but... I think he knows that he had that sewn up from 100 meters to go and before that. And like I say, it was Oz that was nervous and he had it all under control. Well, the title of greatness is not one that should be easily bestowed on anybody. But surely he deserves it. And you know the Ethiopians and the Kenyans will talk about what didn't happen. They'll be wandering through the mid zone and they'll be discussing the tactics. But you know what, Brent? Serves them right. You cannot just keep coming back and doing the same thing time and time again and expecting a different result because he's got better and they haven't and they have never really tested him fully. This was hard, but they've never really come up with a way of, of taking control away from Farah so that he can't control that 600 meters in the way that he does. But look how determined he was. He wasn't just faster than them. He wasn't just more confident than them. He was more able to resist the challenges because he's more determined than them. He'd give everything. He's always been an athlete who was prepared to work for his prizes. Well, tonight, as he did in the 10,000 metres, as he did in the Olympic Games, he's always had challenges. He's always been able to hold them up. And by the way, if you've done 50 points something for the last lap, and if you're one of the competitors, know he's done that. And look at the reaction. And look at the, this is absolutely brilliant. We are enjoying great times in distance running Steve and for us it is a special pleasure we've waited a long time now we've got a double Olympic champion three times world champion and a man who's inspiring the next generation of distance runners and hopefully that will carry on through but I'll tell you one thing you'll learn from this man distance running is hard winning races is extremely hard and that man Alberto Salazar has given him the opportunity to become the best in the world and he's, he's still a great lad. He's still going to be asking when he finishes you know, who, who, who's playing football tomorrow because he hasn't been in touch with it recently. But, oh, that's a new one. He's developing a new style. What about the more? What, what, what do you call that? Give that a name, Steve. Go on. No, there, you see, there's more familiar. That's the, the, the more, but we'll come up with a name for the other one a bit later. But it, well, you know, it, it, we saw Alberto then. We should also... You know, mention, and I'm sure Alberto Mo would be the first to mention the support he gets from UK Athletics to do his own thing, to prepare in the way he wants to. Hasn't always been the case. Uh, Barry Fudge, if, in a way, he's not forgetting anyone. And there, yet again, confirmation of his gold medal, 13:26.98. No one will remember the winning time. Gabriel took the silver medal, just tipping Coetch on the line. There were others challenging, but they challenged never really amounted to anything and so it was left yet again for Mo Farah to take the global title his fifth in the last two years since uh, this time two years ago in Daegu